Father God. And Lord, Father God, we've come this morning, oh God, to celebrate that which you have given of uh, the ability to give life, oh God. So Lord, we say thank you for every mother, oh Lord, Father God. Thank you for every seed that you allowed to come forth, oh Lord, Father God. We ask that you touch them right now, oh Lord. Anywhere that they are, oh Lord, touch them where they are right now, oh God. Lord, Father God, help them to understand that the things that they're going through as mothers, oh God, you can make them easy. All they have to do is turn it over into your hands, oh Lord. Lord, Father God, that child, oh Lord, Father God, that brother, oh Lord, Father God, that sister, oh Lord, Father God. Lord, Father God, you touch right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Equip them, oh Lord, Father God. For you said in your word that the race was not given to the swift, oh Lord, but to him and that can endure to the end, oh Lord, Father God. We ask a special blessing on our mothers right now, oh Lord. For we know that in the beginning, oh Lord, Father God, you gave them the strength. And towards the middle, oh Lord, Father God, it seemed like they would waver, oh God. But Lord, Father God, we know that you are a sustainer. And we know that you will sustain, oh Lord, Father God. Lord, Father God, we ask that you strengthen them right now, oh Lord, Father God. Help them to see, oh Lord, Father God, that their end will be a sweet result, oh Lord, Father God. We understand, oh Lord, the hardships and the obstacles, oh God. We understand, oh Lord, Father God, the things that display in their minds, oh God. But we ask right now, oh God, that you wash everything with the blood. Lord, Father God, the blood that cleanses, oh Lord, the blood that purifies, oh God. Touch every child, oh Lord, Father God, that does not understand where their mother is coming from, oh God. But help them understand, oh Lord, Father God. Give them dreams, oh Lord, Father God, to see, oh God. Give them visions, oh Lord, Father God, to see, oh God. Lord, help them to understand that standing in a mother's position, oh God, is not an easy thing. Standing in a mother's position, oh God, puts them in danger every day, oh Lord, Father God. So, Lord, Father God, we ask that you touch the mothers this morning. Touch the fathers this morning. Touch our father this morning, oh God. Pastor Ross, oh Lord, Father God, as he leads his sheep, oh Lord, Father God. Under your divine guidance, oh Lord, Father God. And Lord, Father God, we ask that you bless every aspect of this, this service this morning, oh Lord. Touch, heal, and set free, oh Lord, Father God. We declare it and we decree it right now in the name of Jesus. And it is in your name that we say amen and amen. At this point in time, I'm going to give way to our pastor to say anything. Okay, we're going to move right into the scripture. I'm going to ask, well, I'll read the scripture. Psalms 91. That's where we're going to go this morning. Psalms okay. 91. I like that. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noism of the pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor the arrow that flieth by day. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall, set, shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy inhabit inhabit habitation, there shall no evil fall before thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, 
lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under your feet. The reading of the Lord is blessed at this time, worship and praise. But before then, the voice of our pastor. Praise the Lord, everybody. Now put your hands together and let's give God some glory. Come on, come on. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, the name of the Lord shall be praised. And we bless him on today. This is not just any other day, but it's the Lord's day. And I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. So I enter into his court for thanksgiving, his gates of praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. I said, the Lord is good. And if the Lord has been good to you, show some signs by opening your mouth and give him glory. We give him glory. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough, even if I try this, you've been so good, you've been so good.
saudade mesmo. Aleluia! Did he open any doors? Did he make any waves? Aleluia! Não vai dar Aleluia! Did he heal your body? Aleluia! Lord, you've been good, Jesus. You've been good. You've been good, God. Aleluia! You've been good. You've been good. Just part of me, God. You've been good. Yeah! Mother Cole, Mother Jesse, 
Mother Bird, right. all those that have been put in place to be mothers for us. I just thank you. He is so worthy. Yes, he worthy is. Worthy of our praises today. And Lord, I just thank you for allowing all the mothers that are here today and to let us know that we're not alone. We're not alone. Whatever we're going through, we're here today. And that's what I thank God for. I thank God for my family Amen. and my yes. children. Yes. And I'm praying for my children. We have to pray for our children. Yes. Right. Right. Continuously. Yes. Continuously. When we get mad and angry, we have to stop getting mad and angry at them. And, and well, let me keep it in the eye mode. I'm an eye mode person. All right. When I get angry. I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing this. I'm not yeah. doing that for them. But I just thank God for the strength that he allows me to get up every single day Amen. in my right mind. Thank you, Jesus. Because our right mind, we, you don't know, we, a lot of us are on the edge. That's right. We're on the edge and we don't know what's going to happen from minute to minute. And I just thank him for the use of all my limbs. I thank him for all of my limbs. Praise God. And I just thank him for another year that he's allowed me yes. to celebrate being a mother Amen. and a grandmother. Amen. Amen. So I just thank y'all for being in my life yes. because okay. nobody knows the struggle we go through. Amen. That's right. And who puts the peace in our life? You don't have to walk around and tell everybody, this one helped me, that one helped me, this one did this, this one, no. Because God sees all. Yes, yes, yes he, he does. does. And what is done in the dark will come in the light. Amen. So I'm just going to you to keep praying for me and I'll pray for you. Amen. I love Jesus. He's my Savior. When the storms are raging, he's my shelter.
God bless you. God bless you. Come on, clap your hands. Give God some glory. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some glory. Give God some glory. I understand. Give God some glory. Somebody give God some glory. Hallelujah. He's been good to us. Amen. And on this, on this Mother's Day, we just want to bless His name. Hallelujah. Through some difficulty, we still made it. I was sharing with the people on Tuesday night uh, that I had seen some statistics. And um, the statistics said from uh, March 2020, when they started calculating uh, numbers for COVID until now, the planet lost almost a third of its population. So when I think about that one out of three died, and I'm still here. I've got a reason to give God the praise. I, I don't know about you. Maybe you already knew that nothing was going to happen to you. And you was going to be good. You was going to be fine. But I didn't know that. Because I didn't cross every T. And I didn't dot every I. But somehow or another, God still extended his grace. To allow me to live another day. And so I give God glory. On today. We are blessed and we're fortunate to have with us uh, the bishop 
David Grayson. Amen. 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 And he is a not just a friend, but he is family. Yes. He is not just a preacher, but he is the preacher. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And somebody would ask the question, is there a word from the Lord? And I believe that he has something that's going to bless the Lord's people on today. Not only is he a preacher, but he is an entrepreneur, he's a businessman. And, and what I like about the family that I belong to is that um, in whatever giftings God gives them, they put them to work, even within the family. And so uh, if you know that he has, uh, well, he is, and he will be working with me very closely, Sister Kim, as we work on getting this body under control. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So I am grateful to the Lord for sending him our way. Uh, we were having a difficult time earlier this week. And uh, the first call I made was to Sister Kim while she was at work because I didn't understand some of the stuff the doctors were saying. And before she could say anything else, she said, come on, let's pray. And Sister Evangelist Banks, she began to pray until I felt something. And I believe that God has put all things in common in our midst. Amen? Amen. And so we are grateful. On today, before our preacher comes, my baby girl, Sister Oniasia, is going to deliver the sermonic selection and she's going to give her testimony. And then the next preaching, speaking voice you will hear will be that of Bishop David Grayson. And we're going to trust the anointing that's on his life and we're going to follow the leader in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, Sister Oni. Super thankful and grateful for you. Amen. Praise God. Um, I appreciate everything you do for me, even though sometimes you may think I don't. <laughs> I really do, 100%. And I know it's a rough one for you, but just know that you have so many people behind you and everybody who loves you. And a village who cares so much about you. Amen. Amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Jesus, yes, all right. Break it. 
Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. We're in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. We're in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. In His presence, there is fullness of joy. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Hallelujah. And at His right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands and bless Him. to this great man of God. Amen. Pastor Vincent Ross, the set gift of this house. And we praise God for you. Amen. And certainly to all of the people of God here, true, true vine family. Amen. Amen. And I see family. If I have family here, that means all of y'all are my family. Amen. This is just another family church that I'm in. Amen. 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 I'm glad that God has given me the opportunity to come and to uh, share with you. Uh, certainly, I enjoyed Mother's testimony. Yes. Uh, two mothers that gave the testimonies on, on today. And uh, I said to Pastor, I said, it's nothing like the mothers. Amen. I love the mothers. Yes. Amen. Yes, Amen. Because the mothers that pray you through. Yes, sir. Amen. And so we praise God for you mothers. And I just want to say happy Mother's Day to all of you on today. And certainly I thank God for my own mother and praise the Lord and um, talk with her this morning. And, and uh, we shared and I praise God for her. And when I, when I look at, amen, Pastor Vincent and I look at uh, Sister, Sister Lisa, my other cousin there, I think of Mother Charlie. Amen. And certainly I miss her. Yes, sir. And one thing about Mother Charlie, that's why I love the mother so, because she would make me some meatballs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the Swedish meatballs. Yes, sir. Amen. I don't know y'all know about it. Yes, 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 sir. But, you know, she, she would come with my own dish. That's right. That's right. And she would bring it to my church. Yes. Amen. And I look forward to that. Amen. I certainly, and I, I don't think I'll ever have it again. Right. Amen. Not like that anyway. That's right. Amen. So it, it was just a, I, I enjoy the older saints, the seasoned saints, the seasoned mothers and fathers of the church. There's nothing like them. Amen. Yeah, we have good church now, but it's nothing like those old praying saints. That's right. help the prayers too. So we praise God uh, this morning. Amen for being here, and I thank God for my life, health, and strength. And I'm gonna, amen, amen, amen. It's so important. Life, health, and strength. I heard somebody testify. She said, "You know, I, I'm thankful for my mind." Yes, yes, sir. You can have money, but don't have your mind, and somebody will take it all from you. Yes, right. Am I talking to anybody here? Talking right. You don't have your mind. Your health. So important that we have these things. So important that we take care of ourselves. Make sure we're okay. Amen. But if you lose your mind, you can't hardly do nothing. That's right. You don't know where you are. That's right. Yes, sir. We don't know where you are, but I thank God that when I look at everybody here, I can tell all of y'all know where you are today. Amen. Amen. Let's give the musicians a hand. God bless the musicians. Amen. So I praise God for you. And, and um, we're going to, amen, going to the word of the Lord today. Praise the Lord. Are y'all excited about Jesus? Amen. Amen. Yes. Y'all like to praise God over here at True Vine? Amen. I can tell y'all do. Amen. I can tell some of y'all kick your heels off sometimes. And go forward. Amen. Amen. Who Amen. about kicking your heels off? Yes. Amen. Amen. See? Point to somebody. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. God. There's Amen. always somebody in the church that's going to kick them heels off. 
and we're going to give God praise the way you ought to praise God. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So I thank you today. First Kings, the second, 17th chapter. Amen. The 8th. Through the 15 verses. Hallelujah. 1 Kings 17, 8. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this time to share your word. But we know that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. God bless us. Bless us as we bring forth your word, Lord. And we thank you for the anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. Yes, Lord. And the anointing that makes understanding easy. Yes. And hearing easy and receiving easy. Oh God, we thank you right now. We praise you. Your wonderful name. Thank God and amen. amen. First Kings 17 and 8, it says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, give thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. Yes, sir. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of mill shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. Amen. God bless the word of the Lord. For the word of the Lord is blessed. This morning, I want to talk to you today about a woman of faith. And today, on Mother's Day, we are going to look at this particular woman of faith. This woman uh, in our scripture doesn't start out as a woman of faith, but she sure ends up a woman of faith. And that is what we need to start with this morning. Whoever you are and whatever your faith is like, to end up as a person of great faith, you start out as a person of somewhat less faith. Mm -hmm. Now, that may seem obvious now that I say it, but I think, though it may seem obvious, in many ways we expect our faith to just be there. But you know, God will still use you even if you don't have a great faith. We see this in our passage today. The land is in the middle of a great drought and predicted by Elijah himself. And Elijah has been in isolation in the Kareth Ravine, a small tributary to the river Jordan and in verse 8 the word of the Lord comes to him and directs him to go to Zarephath 
which was in what is today the state of Lebanon. And now the prophet Elijah, he's been around. He must know life is going to get difficult. And Carice, where he was staying, means separated. And the name depicts perfectly Elijah's situation. He was alone and without human contact for an extended period of time. And God then sends him to Zarephath with means a fiery trial and depicts perfectly what his situation is going to be. So God calls him out of the frying pan and into the fire. You can imagine Elijah walking through to Zarephath thinking, OMG. <laughs> what in the world has God planned for me next? Have you ever been in a place in your life that you're just wondering, what's the next phase of my life? What's the, the next place? What, what else do you have for me, God? I, I know I've been through some stuff and I'm going through some things, but what's going to happen to me next? Notice God doesn't give him much to go by. God is light on details here. Well, go at once to Zarephath or Sidon and stay there. I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. So does the woman have a name? What will she be wearing? What is her address? How about that? Does she know I'm coming? Do I meet her in the morning? What if I'm late? Does she have a criminal record? Does God do this to you too? Life is moving on and you're doing your thing and bam! Out of the blue, something hits you and you ask God, what is going on? And guess what? You get no details. But still, you're in this situation. Now, with Jonah, God doesn't give many details because Jonah might chicken out and not do as God asks again. But Elijah, Elijah here, he is different. He isn't like Jonah. He is bold. He's confident. He's strong and faithful. And Elijah is a man who will do whatever God asks of him. So why the lack of detail? Sometimes God is silent because we are like Jonah and we'll refuse to walk in faith if we know what is coming. Mm -hmm. But sometimes God is silent because his awesome power is revealed. Yes, sir. Slowly, he lets you know little by little. He doesn't show us the whole staircase all at one time. But he shows us step by step. And sometimes the time spent waiting will intensify the impact of the work of God on our lives. And sometimes the wait will make us more than ready to receive the word of the Lord. And here is a truth for you. If we have the details in advance, then we wouldn't walk by faith, would we? But the Bible tells us that the just shall live by faith. Yes, sir. So Elijah must walk in faith alone with minimal details to his Zarephath, his fiery trial. Now at the gate he finds our woman of faith. And what I love is that when Elijah arrives at the gate, there's the widow front and center. He doesn't even have to Google her or, amen, look her up on Facebook or, amen, try to find her on YouTube. He doesn't have to ask around, but there she is. You know, we want the details of our circumstances from God up front, don't we? But 
God supplies the details as we walk in faith. As we step out and arrive where God has directed us. And there are the details standing right in front of us. I realize that as we grow in faith and as we mature in the things of God, he allows us to take steps that we have to fully trust and believe that he is going to bring us to an expected end. He is not going to allow us to get hurt. He is not going to allow us, amen, to be destroyed. But he tells us, just have faith in me, and I'm going to work everything out for your good. But you're just going to have to trust me. You're just going to have to take me at your word. And let me tell you something. When you've been in a place in your personal life where you don't know where your ends going to meet, you don't know where the money is going to come from, you don't know where the check is going to come from, you don't know if it's going to come from the south, the east, the west, or the north, but you're going to trust God because God said, I shall supply all of your needs according to your riches and glory. You're going to just have to learn how to trust God. Look at somebody and tell them, you're going to just have to trust God. So here is this woman gathering stinks in verse 10. And Elijah calls to her. What he does is play a trick on her, so to speak. Elijah calls her and asks for a drink. And as she is going to get the water, he asks, and bring me, please, a piece of bread. And in the ancient Middle East, hospitality was a very big deal. If someone asks for a drink of water, amen, it is rude, even un an unspeakable act to refuse the person a drink. It would be shameful for this woman to refuse him a drink of water. She may be broke, she may be at the end of her rope, but she still has her dignity and she can perform this act of hospitality. So she heads for the water jar. But to give away her bread, that is another thing altogether. Yet she is trapped by Elijah adding on a second request. Right. Understand the second request is asking for her life commitment. For the request is asking for all she has. Mm -hmm. Who was this woman? Her name is not even mentioned, wow. is it? Wow. Wow. What we do know is that she is a single mother who is trying to make it. And it looks like she isn't going to make it. Wow. You have, ever have some people that, they seem so encouraged when it look like you ain't going to make it. They get so excited, they get so happy because no, maybe no, the business no. is not working out the way you planned it. Or maybe the marriage is not working out the way amen, you planned it. Or, or, or maybe your health is not up to par. Or maybe you're struggling in your money. And some people get so excited and, right. and they celebrate you. That's right. That's right. Some people can't stand you, but they'll follow you on Facebook just to see what you're doing. That part. Yes, sir. <laughs> Right. They really don't like you, never comment, right. never say nothing, but hey man, they never just checking you out all the time. Right. Years yes. checking you out, checking what you write, checking what pictures you post, but they really don't like you. They hate on you from a distance. No. 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 Some people celebrate when you ain't doing well. No. But look at somebody and tell them, let them keep on watching. Let them keep on watching. But I'm going to show them something oh, after a while. Oh, because if God be for me, he's more than the world against me. Yes, he is. So she is trying, this, this woman, this single mama, this single mother, she is trying desperately to take care of her son. But it is clear that she cannot provide for him. Usually a widow would have family to take to help take care of her. And many times a brother would marry a widow in the family to make sure she was taken care of. Yes, sir. And that would make you extra careful who you marry. Yeah. Wouldn't it? Yes, it would. But this woman, she apparently 
doesn't have anyone. And if she dies, no one will notice. And as a woman, she has low social standing. And as a widow, she has no social standing. She is a nobody. A phantom to neighbors as she comes and goes from her house. She is so much a non-person, we never even learn her name. She is literally a non-entity. And at this point, the drought has been going on for about three and a half years, and she is at the end of her resources. Of everyone who is limited in resources, she doesn't even make it on the charts. Hold out your hand. You see that? That is all she had. <laughs> what fits in the palm of her hand? What is, is that about one third cup? No, that she isn't saying no to Elijah. She is just pointing out the physical reality that there isn't enough for herself, her son, and Elijah. She has literally nothing. There's nobody. And yet, God will use her for great things. He'll use her. Somebody, not even on the map. You might feel this morning, in the early afternoon, that you're not even on the map. But I'm here to let you know God will use you for great things. So only a few people may know your name. But God will use you for great things. Yes, he will. God's going to do something even for that young lady that was singing up here a little while ago, right before I preached. Yeah. God told me while I was sitting in my chair, as you begin to sing the song, he said, I want you, he said, I want you, amen, to, and to fast and pray more in this season of your life because there's some doors, he said, he want to open for you. Wow. There's some amen. doors, there's some doors. You're going to surprise some people. Some people, amen, perhaps counted you out. But God said, there's some doors that I'm going to open for you. As you devote yourself more to me, as you dedicate your life more to me, I'm going to open doors for you. And let me tell you something, when God tells me something, it's going to come to pass. He said, that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and in insults and in hardship and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Do you see what is happening here? Do you understand what God is setting up for both the woman and Elijah? Let me ask you to consider this. If God operates this way in the lives of those found in the Holy Scripture, why would you expect God to act differently in your life? If the weakness of this widow makes her strong, if the weakness of the Apostle Paul made him strong, why is it so hard to believe the weakness in your life is what will make you strong? What do you need for God to use you for powerful things? Amen. A weakness? Why is that? Because when I am weak, when I cannot do it, on my own anymore. Amen. Amen. This is when I let God take over. That's when, but wait, 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 wait. Wait. Does this woman who has never even named in the passage have any faith at all? Look at what she says to Elijah. Any faith that may have been there is evaporated. Wow. What she has is despair. Out of hopelessness. She is lost. Verse 12. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Yeah. If there ever was a phrase that spoke of faith, that was not it. That's, that's true. <laughs> and yet she is able to have this terrific faith. So at this point, does she even know who God is? She is a pagan living in another land where they worship false gods. She is not a Hebrew. She is not a believer. Is God going to expect a person to act in faith where there is no faith? Not so fast now. There is a hint. Okay. 
We see that she has a tiny twinkle of faith. We see this at the beginning of verse 12 when she says, as surely as the Lord your God lives. She acknowledges that there is a God. There is a start of faith there, is there not? But look at verse 15. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. Hold on. Look at somebody tell her, hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What happened there? Did you, did you see that leap? The woman just did a whole row of hurdles. She goes from a teeny, tiny faith to enormously huge faith. She goes from the person with the least amount of faith in town to the person with the greatest faith in town. In the blink of an eye. Amazing. Elijah asks for the impossible. He asks to be fed first. Wow. Which will pretty much take all she has. That's right. When was the last time a preacher asked you for your last? Mm -hmm. Wow. Asked you for your last. Says so the seed. And it was your ass. Mm -hmm. I remember a woman in my church, amen, she told me, and I never knew this, she said, she said, Bishop, I'm going to tell you, I would give all I had in church, and I didn't have money to take the bus home. Mm -hmm. She said, but I would walk home every single Sunday. And she would walk to her apartment, but all that time, she was believing God for a house. And she said, because of your teaching, because of your faith, that's the reason why the Lord blessed me with a house. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And this woman is well to do now. She got money. Praise God. Amen. She has money. She moved somewhere else now. She ain't with me anymore, but, but she's blessed. <laughs> <laughs> she's prosperous. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Because, amen, I was taught faith. I was thrown in a faith pool from a little boy. I was taught faith. I was taught to sow seeds, and if you give, it shall come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give it to your bosom. She acknowledges that there is a God. Elijah, Elijah here asks for uh, the impossible. He asks to be fed first. She must give away what she has first. You know what she is doing? By all logic and sense, she is choosing death for her son and herself. But God, he defies our logic. He defies it. We, we see our faith as holding on. And when God sees our faith as letting go, we want to hold on, but God says, uh, let go. When a friend has asked you how things are going in a difficult time in your life, have you ever responded, I'm just holding on? What you mean is that you are holding on to your faith, right? But here, right here, we see just the opposite. Let it go. Now, Elijah encourages her. In essence, he speaks the word of God to her, the powerful word of God. Don't be afraid. Look at somebody else and tell them, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. Right there, I think it is right there where something inside her says, take the step. Yes. Take the step. See, the only way some of us are going to amen, move to that next level is we have to take the step. We have to move to the next level. It doesn't make sense. It defies logic. It runs contrary to everything she may have ever done in her life. As she turns to walk to her house and she has something that she did not have seconds before. And that's real faith. I mean, who in this room could do this? Who here could give up all they had knowing that it would directly lead to their death? and their child's death. 
I don't think there is one of us who could, but I also don't think she could either. But God blessed her with the faith to take the step. And she responds, it is clear that the spirit has come upon her, giving her the faith she needed to take the first step toward the house. Yeah. And continue on that path of faith. See, instead of holding on, instead of holding tight to the last thing she has, she let go and upon her came the spirit. Some things you just got to let go in life. There are some people in your life that you got to let go of in order to move to your next level in God. In order for you to go to big places, some people can't go on this journey with you. There are some people you just going to have to cut off. And every now and then God will do a purging in our lives. He'll purge most of our friends out of our lives. Why? Because they can't go where you're going. Oh, they can't be where you're going to be. Why? Because God has some great things in store for you. Look at your neighbor and tell them God has some great things in store for you. But you're going to have to let it go. You're going to have to let it go. You've been holding on long enough. But God said in this season, in this hour, you're going to have to let some things go. So do it today. Do it today. What has been holding you back? Some here have been thinking about faith for some time. Do I have it? Have I lost it? What does it feel like? Some here are hoping the faith will slowly creep up on you. I hope it doesn't hurt. Some want to know every detail before they take the step. Some here say to themselves, well, seeing is believing. So they are waiting to see. But this is holding back. It is standing still with the illusion of moving forward. Some people only live an illusion. They only live a make-believe life. But if you really want God to bless you, you're going to have to take a leap of faith and go out on the water to swim and watch God turn some things around in your favor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you've been through, but God said you're about to leap into your miracle. God doesn't ask her to do anything way out of her ordinary life, does he? God doesn't ask her to build some great church or be a missionary and travel to other lands. He doesn't ask her to give up her house or testify to crowds of people, but he asked her for a small piece of bread. Granted, it was all she had, but it wasn't something that was beyond her everyday life. Faith isn't about huge projects. It's about everyday life. Because God uses ordinary, everyday, even somewhat boring, been there, done that, ways to build our faith. Yet notice it is a spiritual thing that hits her, not a mere material thing, but she has to believe before she takes the action of making the cake of bread, or she wouldn't make the cake of bread. She was limited in how God could use her, wasn't she? wasn't much of a person and she didn't have much to offer. No, that's nonsense. Who takes that flower and extends it into days of flowers? Not the woman, but I hear somebody say God. What God? Remember what Paul says. And 
the blessings come raining down. Look at somebody and tell them the blessings is gonna come raining down. Raining down on my house. Raining down on my car. Raining down on my children. The flour and the oil don't run out. Lord, you're getting ready. You're going to a season where your money is not going to run out. Tell somebody, my money is not going to run out. So spin, spin, spin. But more, more, more. It's on its way. It's coming. God's going to rain on you. It's going to rain on me. Of a brain, of a mind. 
Yes. Why are they to be free? All he wants you to have is a little faith. A little faith. That's all. And watch the money come. Watch the business come. Watch it. So that I can learn real faith. Wow. I read about it. Uh -huh. I studied it. Uh -huh. I preached about it. Come on. But I never lived it. Until now. Real faith. When you don't know what's going to happen. But there's a whole bunch of uncertain things that's going on in your life. To know that God is opening up the windows of heaven. Thank you, Jesus. And He's pouring out blessings. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For them who will not be moving enough, see me all to receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This woman of God is going to, I don't know, her level of giving at this church yet, right now. But she's going to be in the top. Three or five. Amen. People. Amen. Thank in this ministry. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Where you going? You guys need each other. Because she's going to bless you and you're going to bless her. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But God has a story for her. true vine. Just stand firm. Just stand firm. And watch God move. Watch him. Watch him, cousin. Watch him move. Though Mother's Day is now bittersweet. Right? Bittersweet. And Father's Day, bittersweet. You know? You go through things. It's called life. And guess what? Life is not easy. Life is tough. There are people that misunderstand you. They don't understand you. They don't, they don't, they don't really know you. And they think they have you all mapped out, but they never even had a conversation with you. But yet, they hate you now because of what somebody else said about you. They don't even really know your story. They don't know what you've been through. They don't, they don't, know, they don't know what you had to do in order to get to where you are right now. But I want to encourage you, saints, to keep holding on. Keep praying. Don't stop. Keep praying. Keep that fire that you have on the inside of you. Keep it. Even when you get angry. You're going to use that anger as a passion for the things of God. And you're going to get so angry not reaching as many lost souls as you ought to reach, you're going to do something about it. Hallelujah. Use that love, use that compassion to move to the next level. And as I take my seat, I pray that you will continue to be strengthened in the things of God. Be encouraged. The Lord loves you. And I love you too. Put your hands together and bless the Lord.
and Bishop Pierce um, out of Baltimore was there. He used the same text. I said, okay, Lord, I hear you. Some of the same things I heard yesterday. So I thank God that he sent the messenger again to reinforce what he said yesterday. Amen. Can you hear me now? Amen. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Say it again for the people all the way in the back. Right. Amen. Amen. So we thank God. It's giving time. Uh, if you're giving electronically, you can see us at GiveLify, True Vine Ministries, Church of God in Christ in Hempstead. And if you're giving on the Cash App, it's dollar sign TVM. C-O-G-I-C. For those that have joined us virtually, we thank God for you. That's dollar sign TVM C-O-G-I-C. Or we'll take good old-fashioned cash. Amen. Amen. And we want to be a blessing to our speaker. We're going to take one offering this morning. And we're going to do our very best. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you'll stand with me. If you would stand with me, praise the Lord. Father, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness, for your kindness, and for your mercy. Lord, we thank you for these givers on today. We thank you for the gifts that you've given us to share with your eyes. God, we ask that you would bless those that have to give. Bless those that have a desire, oh God, so that they may be able to bless next time, oh God. And God, you promised that you would return it to us up to some 100 fold. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're in the hand. The usher will come and serve you where you are. Amen.
She said, no, I can't do this. I got to get on the Zoom because I got to interact. Amen. Amen. And that's really what it's all about. And we were talking about the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and there's something that Elder Tiffany talked about when she, we were talking through Psalms 23. He, 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 he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Amen. But before we got to the table... He brought me through the valley of the shadow of death. Somebody say it's just a shadow. Just a shadow. Hallelujah. And he didn't leave me there, but he restored my soul. And when he got to the end, he got good to him. Minister Maurice, he said, surely goodness and mercy. Uh, they're going to follow me. So I got some companions on this trip. All the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to God. So we thank God. Join us for our Bible study on Tuesday night, 7:30, and on Friday night, our inspirational service. This Friday night, our own evangelist banks will be bringing our inspirational word. Amen. And uh, who who do we have preaching on Sunday? Who, who who's the preacher on next Sunday? Yeah. Um, oh, Evangelist Candace McCoy. So y'all trying to kill us. Hallelujah. Amen. She is a real problem. Amen. But we thank God for all of you on, tonight, on today. Thank God for the word of God today. I almost got up and started running. Jesus. <sighs> If he did that while we in here, imagine if we was no, okay, I'm not even gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Amen. Praise God. Matter of fact, no, you know what? I, I got my speaker now for the evangelism uh, uh the, the fire, the fire hour at the end of the convocation. Uh, yeah, Bishop, if, if your schedule would pr pr would allow you our jurisdictional uh, uh, work um, convocation is coming and is this was, we're celebrating 30 years and because i am the head of the department of evangelism they've given us you know to have our own little thing after it's all over and so we're gonna hit it and quit it we're gonna give them an hour of power you know so you come in and do what god has given you to do Amen. and that'll be at our headquarters 1142 Herkimer street in the in brooklyn new york amen where our own bishop, Tyrone Leland Butler, is the pastor. And, and he is. Uh, matter of fact, well, he's not running because I believe he got it. Yeah. Praise, okay. God. Praise God. 
Praise God. You know, some folks say to politics, he just he just got to stand and be who he is, and God's gonna give him the favor. And as he grows, we grow. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? Somebody called me yesterday and they said, you next. I said, next for what? And I said, no, y'all keep that now. Y'all keep all that. <laughs> Hallelujah. We thank God for all of you. All right, and, and uh, if there's nothing else that needs to be said or done, please remember our mothers. Uh, somebody talked about Mother Desi and Mother Bernice and Mother Coleman. Um, hopefully, um, uh, we can deliver those packages to them Amen. before the week is over because I want them to be recognized. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to try to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's remember them. And for those whose moms have gone on, like my mom, amen, she may not physically be here, but she's with me right here. Amen. 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 As I got up on yesterday morning, uh, Bishop, I was thinking about mom and I started putting those sweet potato pies together. And uh, they deep dish sweet potato pies. I made them. I, made them. Okay. I said I was gonna make two, but I made four. Okay. Hallelujah. Sister Pebbles is putting her bid in for one of them. <laughs> we'll see if we can get her a slice. We'll see if we can get her a slice. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. All right, if all hearts and minds are clear, uh, Dean Keys, did you want to say anything? Did you want to have words? Uh, uh, Judy, did you want to have words? All right. I thank God for my little girl. Britain is here. Amen. Amen. Entrepreneur. I'm so proud of this young lady as Amen. God is doing great things in her yes. life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We need to celebrate our own. Amen. Because when she blow up and she goes up, you know, I, you know, I don't want to have to go call through somebody else and get an appointment. Amen. But I believe she'll be right there for me if I need her. Amen. So we thank God for everything again. Amen. And, and at this time, I'm going to ask us all to stand. We're going to ask Bishop Grayson to come back, have final words, and to send us home. forward to it, y'all. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all celebrate. Y'all celebrate. Amen. You gotta speak it. You gotta be forward thinking. I'm a forward thinker. I think 10 and 20 years down the road. He said, celebrate the entrepreneurs. Celebrate that rich woman right there. Amen. Y'all better act nice. Amen. You never know who you might need, right? It's y'all. Y'all understand what I'm saying. You act nice to everybody. Nobody can ever say I treat them bad. Never. But I'm good to everybody. And let's be nice to everybody. Amen. Put your hands together.
for this service. We thank you for the man of God. God, we ask that you would touch him now. Touch him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Give him the strength he needs. God, bless this congregation. Bless this church. Give them the desires of their heart. And oh God, bless every mother here today. Bless Mother's Day all day long. And as we leave this place, but